Hi everyone, Mr. K again. Uh, I'm here to do another video for the viola for the 2017 Elementary Honor Orchestra for Santa Ana Unified School District. Uh, I'm going to play through Frog in a Tree, written by Edmund Sinecki. It's um, I'm just going to play it straight down, and then I'll break it up into segments so you have something to practice with. So here is Frog in a Tree. So, the first four measures is the introduction, and we know that in the first four measures we have to retake at the end, and we have to repeat back to the beginning. Now, the other thing that's unique about this introduction is we have double stops, and we probably haven't done double stops beforehand, but double stops you need to play on both strings. So here we're playing on the D string and the A string at the same time. So you need to make sure that your bow is right in the middle of both strings. Try not to have it more on the D string, try not to have it more on the A string. So right in the middle of both strings. And then you also want to add weight just so that you're producing that full forte sound. So, and the, la the other thing you should consider is the type of bow stroke we're getting. So both the entry of, of the tumblers and this frog in the tree should have very detaché types of sounds. So, Detaché just means detach, right? So separate bow strokes, very clean, clear attacks at the beginning and the ends of your notes. So it should sound. The other thing we should consider when we do a rhythm like this, where we have quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, is how we divide our bow. So anytime we have a quarter note, we want to use plenty of bow, but if we have eighth notes to follow, we don't want to use the entire bow, one, two, and three. We want to divide the bow so that we use the whole bow, and then we stay at the tip for the eighth notes, one, two, and three. If we did the opposite, or if we used the entire bow for our eighth notes, one, two, and three, it's going to become very cumbersome. Uh, very hard to play these eighth notes with such big bows and it tends to sound sloppy. So if we do use a lot of bow, it sounds too aggressive and not very distinct. So use bow divisions. Use a full bow on the quarter and then short bows for the eighth note. Right? And then full quarter. Same thing. at the frog, and then just open A for the three quarter notes. Retake and do it again. Right. And then if
if you stick to that, it's basically the same rhythm patterns uh, throughout the piece. So measure five, we're just changing notes. Right? And I would try and set a tunnel. So you would set your second finger on the D string, but then tunnel it over so that you still have that open A. So there, you don't have to lift your fingers. Whatever the notes are. But what I'm, my point is, you want to try and keep your fingers down as much as possible. Now measure A. We have that curved line that connects two notes. And those two notes are G, E. So when you see that curved line, that means you're going to slur the notes, those two notes. So you're going to make sure that the bow keeps going in the same direction for both quarter notes. So if you're doing the, a slur for two quarter notes, basically you're just doing a half note, but you're changing the pitch in between. So two beats down bow, one, two, but you need to change the notes. G, E, right? One, two, three. That's what we call a slur. One, two, three, four, right? Uh, same thing for measure nine, it just it happens at the end of the bar. Slur, right? Three, four. And make sure you think about the bow direction. So we can practice these slurs, but you want always practice it in the right direction. So here it's going up bow, whereas measure eight was going down bow. Right, measure nine or ten, keeping a good detache. Slur. That's harder because they're now eighth notes, right? So you have grape, grape, jello, grape. Grape, grape, jello, grape. Lift, right? And we have that bow lift. So we have to cheat the half note. You're not going to give it its full two beats. You're going to give it maybe one and lift on two so that we're ready to set for measure 13. 13 and on, it's very much all debt to shape. Be careful about your notes. Make sure you're playing the right notes. And then also notice that measure 16, this is the first time we get to play those open G string and C string. So it's very unique for the viola, and I would just dig in on those notes, right? So here's measure 13. So you gotta rock your bow, make sure you're on both the G string and C string at the same time. And give me a good amount of weight so that we can bring out those low notes. And the other thing to consider is, are we playing the tune at this point? Before, at measure five, we had the tune. The tune is the part that we can sing. Bum, 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 da, dum, dee, dum, right? But when we get to 13, Bum 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 dun 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 bum 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 bum. It's not as important. It's kind of hard to sing that melody. We don't exactly remember it. So this is what we call harmony. We're basically adding uh, richness to the sound of somebody else who's playing the same theme that you played at measure five. So there you get to play the melody, we are adding in the harmony. So it's not as important, but I would bring or stress those low notes, the C string and the G string. Um, measure 17 on is very, same, is very much the same as measure 13. Oh, sorry, 19. 21. Retake your bow into 21, and now we have piano, so we have to play it nice and soft. Uh, and then we can make our half notes a little bit more legato. One, two, three, four, get to shape. Playing a 
double stop at measure 25 and still trying to achieve the piano is a hard thing to do. So it's going to take some effort and you know if you miss the two strings it's okay, just keep working on it. Um, but we don't want it to jump up a level, right? We want to make sure we still keep it nice and soft. Uh, same kind of ideas. 26. 27. Slur. 29 and soft. And then rest, rest, and then loud. Circle down. Up bow. Circle down. Up bow. Circle down. Slur. And then we're back to piano, right? Now, be careful at measure 29 because we always play on the downbeat for every measure, but we have these rests in between, so you got to count the rests. So it's play, rest, rest, play, play, rest, rest, jello, play, rest, rest, jello, uh, sorry, great, 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 half, no. So be careful about always counting your beats, making sure you know where the rests are. Uh, 37's all piano. your bow gently and make sure you don't have a big tone when you do the double stops. And the other thing to uh, be worried about or to practice at measure 37 is how we change the notes. So if you look at 37 it's all D. When you get to 38 you have three D's and then it changes to G. So know that the G goes on the up bow. So you have to keep track of your bowing. It's down, up, down, change, and then A. Down, change on the up bow, down, down, up, down, up, down, and then 45, it changes faster, down, down, down. Probably some of the trickiest playing there is uh, getting that whole section from measure 49 to 53. So I would practice it slow. One, two, and three. Fifty-three, retake your bow on every quarter rest. One, lift, 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 and down, up, down. All right, no rests at the end. And you can see some of the writing in there that uh, your conductor, Mr. Lizaraga, had written in there. So sim means similar or simile in music, which just means keep doing the same thing you're doing. So always retake your bow on these notes. So hopefully you found that somewhat informative and somewhat helpful. These tutorial videos are just to kind of help you uh, practice at home and on your own. Uh, and then when you feel ready and you're comfortable, I would strongly recommend you take the music to your teacher, uh, play it for them so that they can see what you've been up to and how much pr practice you've put into your instrument and this music. And um, we all look forward to seeing you perform with us in April. So good luck. Happy practicing.